every quarter i try to identify banks before their results whether there is an opportunity to make money in the quarterly or annual results today is a turn of sbi i was thinking today whether to invest or not in this video i am sharing my learnings and what is my final decision i'll first share the reasons for which i would want to buy sbi and after that i'll share the threats or the issues i saw which kind of discouraged me from making this investment let's start with the good part first if you are wondering what is icici bank doing on the screen then just wanted to let you know that icici is at number 3 in sbi's portfolio and makes a significant contribution towards its market cap today i looked at sbi more as a holding company than a bank there are about 170 companies in which sbi has investments in this table i have listed the ones which have a market cap contribution to sbi of more than 10000 crores the top one is sbi life insurance where sbi holds 55.5% followed by sbi 8.73% that 8.73% of icici is worth 69400 crores after that sbi cards reliance industries is number 4 2.3% stake at 43600 crores followed by infosys lnt yes bank access bank bajaj finance kotak mahindra bank one point to highlight on this slide is yes bank stake which is worth 18700 crores now was bought 4 years back during the crisis of yes bank for 7250 crores these 10 companies contribute 48% towards the market cap of sbi which is 715000 crores as of today note that this is not the core business of sbi this is the investments made by sbi over the course of last few decades and these are just 10 companies there are about 170 such companies in which sbi has stake you would have heard the term domestic institutional investor or dii many times honorable president of india is the largest dii government's investment into all public sector companies is is done by a president of india currently all that is worth approximately 40 lakh crore lic holds about 10 lakh crore worth of companies sbi is 5.5 lakh crore followed by hdfc icici kotak reliance and access here i have just listed the companies which have approximate worth of 1 lakh crore or above so this size as well as being a government company by virtue of government being the largest shareholder sbi has a very big unfair advantage For example when Yes Bank had a crisis government asked SBI to bail out the bank so that it does not crash as a result SBI got to buy Yes Bank shares for a real cheap price that value has more than doubled in less than 4 years this advantage is also there with LIC both of these companies are tasked with the rescue act whenever there is a large crisis that at time results in losses also but most of the time they get to buy quality stocks at a very low price during the crisis period and as a result make a lot of money over years The third one, which is my favorite, is increased quarter and quarter and year on year FII holding. The IIN public have actually reduced their holding in SBI, which is a good sign in terms of PE going up and the stock getting re-rated. So, in terms of share holding, government holds fifty seven point five percent, FII is eleven percent, DII is twenty four percent, public seven point three seven percent. The FII stake has increased from nine point eight nine percent. to 11.09% the dii stake has reduced public share also very minor but has gone down if you look at the trend also 9.89% 10.36 10.72 10.91 11.09 continuously the stake has been going up for fii's since the last five quarters this increase in fii holding is a good news during the pandemic time and when the npa clean up was going on for several years sbi had a very high pe that is because the eps was very low because of the losses now this has become lot more reasonable let's have a look i'm jumping to pe ratio so this is what i was saying the pe was somewhere around 70 80 that's because primarily the eps was very low around 10 now the eps is somewhere around 70 80 and pe is roughly around 10 these have reversed so the eps has been going up steadily since 2019 i've just explored the graph to 10 years in this period clearly the npms was getting sorted out the eps was actually negative at this time in the last few quarters and years the profit and eps have improved a lot for sbi if i look at the eps numbers 8 16 17 20 20 18 22 there has been slight dip here because there are a lot of cost pressures because of inflation and so on this should ideally improve once the cost pressures are gone if i look at the annual trend for eps since 2019 there is a significant uptick 
on net profit same on eps front from two and a half rupees the eps has gone up to 62.35 in last five years this eps trend has taken a break in last two quarters from operating numbers perspective i don't see this bettering in this quarter also other income may come to rescue and bump this up slightly in general for most banks interest rates have been supported of net interest income the simple reason being when inflation is high and interest rates go up the spread between the rate at which bank is borrowing money from us and the rate at which bank is lending to us that increases when interest rates lower this spread decreases for example banks right now are taking money from us at around 7% and they are lending it back to us around 9 and 10% so the spread is 2 and 3% so if you look at the net profit margin versus quarterly sales the quarterly sales have been going up the green line depicts the net profit margins these have been going up as well they have dipped a bit in the last two quarters but still significantly better than the lows of 2018 so till interest rates are up the nii's and the net profit margins should remain high from the core business let me take you through the general expectations in the last march the revenue was 358.45 that's 350,845 crores. TTM, which is three quarters of this year and one quarter of the previous trailing year, is already 42802. This should slightly improve only. This number should come to roughly 430 perhaps today. Interest income also 189,981 crores. This should increase to roughly 250,000 crores. Expense growth will be higher than the general rates. This is because of the wage hikes and all. So the overall number here percentage wise will reduce the margins. This number two should be something like a 250,000 crore number. As a result, the financing profit will be minus 70,000 crore. This is how screener shows the results for banks. This is technically not correct because other income will increase as well. This should go up to roughly 150,000 crores. The expenses are split on both heads, which is interest and other income. So profit before tax 75,000 crore, 85,000 crore. This should close into roughly 92,000 crores. If this number of other income goes very high because it includes dividend as well as sale proceeds from any stake sales, then the number could swell up. Otherwise, this number of profit before tax will go down and hence that will impact the EPS further in this quarter. Dividend payout will remain same whatever is the EPS out of which 18% approximately will be paid as dividend. Now let me quickly take you through the threats. Wage hikes. Recently, the wages have gone up. This will put a lot of cost pressure on SBI. Significant part of the cost for SBI is the branch cost that is building lease or rent plus the staff cost that is going to go up significantly. Note that this wage hike does not come with any increase in revenue. The staff's productivity, their net output, the business turn per person that will remain absolutely same. Industry-wide CASA, I discussed this even in the HDFC bank video, but CASA is a problem throughout the industry right now. The cost of raising money from people like you and me, that has gone up significantly. People are not willing to put money in 6.5-7% FDs at all. In fact, recently the limit on bonds has gone down from 1 lakh to 10,000. Very soon the ticket size of investing into bonds at 95 10 or 11% will reduce significantly to 10,000. That will put further pressure on CASA, not just for SBI, but for most banks in the country. That is why I firmly say that interest rates are not going to get reduced in the near future. Banks will not be able to raise money if they reduce the interest rates. Third threat, IT infra apps. I've discussed this topic in length in the HDFC bank video also. Specifically about SBI, I'll share one of my experiences. Recently, we were trying to enable internet banking in SBI for the first time in our account. The branch manager was really cooperative. However, after trying for two or three days, that too several hours in a day, we were not able to set up the app. Finally, when the branch manager could do some jugad and help us, we were able to log in, but we were not able to open FDs online at all. As a result, we had to move a lot of saving bank balance from SBI to another private bank. SBI is lost just because their IT platform refused to work in our case. There is no help available if your app is stuck. Even branch can't do anything. You are at the mercy of God. Just move your money out to another bank whose IT works. This is my experience. You might have had fantastic experience with the Yono app. I could not open a basic FD also. In fact, I've observed SBI staff. There were about four or five FDs. I wanted them to check some things for me. They had to take a note of FD number on a paper. Then they opened FDs one by one using the number that they have noted on paper. 
and then give me the details. As an IT person who has been CTO and worked in banks for so many time, it was a cruel experience for me. I really thought who has designed this system where you can't select the FDs and open them one by one. You have to note down the numbers on a paper. This is a joke, but this is actually not a joke. This is true. Lunchtime ho gaya. SBI still does that. They discourage customers from doing business. They find the flimsiest of the reasons to send you back home and come back another day. At least the work for that day gets reduced. They don't care for the EPS numbers. Their salary is fixed. They get hikes time to time. Otherwise, they'll go on strike. Your or my convenience or the bank's performance numbers don't matter to the staff. I discussed as a first point that 50% of SBI's market cap is of the top 10 holdings. While this is a great thing, it is also going to be a problem if the markets crash because not just the core business will shrink, but also the corresponding returns as well as market cap component of the investment companies will shrink. This will be a double whammy for SBI. And in fact, for most holding companies, this will be a problem if markets shrink considerably. This has been actually a plus point in the last few years where most companies have swelled up significantly in market cap. And as a result, companies like LIC and SBI have benefited significantly. SBI Life Insurance is the second largest insurance company in the country. If you look at the 52 week high low, most of these companies are approximately towards the center of the band. ICICI Group in general is being doing pretty well. ICICI Lombard is nearly 52 week high. HDFC's life insurance company is actually near 52 week low. SBI insurance is at a PE of 77, which is pretty high. If the growth does not continue at a very fast pace, this PE will get corrected and the stock price will crash. Now, SBI life insurance has a considerable say in the overall market cap of SBI. As a result, the dependency on SBI life insurance is pretty high and this is a threat if the insurance business does not grow rapidly. The overall 52 week high low numbers are not showing that great a picture because if this industry was doing great, then most of these stocks would be at 52 week high. SBI has couple of NBFC companies, SBI Global Factors and SBI Payment Services. However, they are not present in the SME finance or microfinance business much. They do have a lot of BCs or banking correspondents, but they don't have a direct company. For example, HDFC has HDB, which is their microfinance arm. NBFCs typically enjoy a lot higher margins they raise money at around 9 10 percent maybe 12 percent but they charge about 20 to 24 percent interest rate even higher sometimes the gross margin are around 8 to 9 percent net margins are anywhere between 4 to 6 percent depending upon the efficiency of the company as a result sbi has limited uptick in terms of the margins from the nbfc play SBI cards, literally there has been no growth. The EPS has been stagnant. The stock is near 52 week low and FIAs and DIs have actually reduced the stake. This is what I was saying. 52 week low, 679. The stock is at 711. The 52 week high was 933. Revenue not going anywhere. EPS 6.3, 6.3, 6.3, 5.78, 6.9. Literally going nowhere. FI holdings 9.08, 9.35, 8.59 reduced in the previous quarter. DII's last quarter 16.27. This quarter it is up a bit, but in September it was 17.28. In March of last year 17.47. Public holding has gone up. September it was 4.7. It is 6% now. Not a good sign. It typically means whatever institutions are selling, public is buying. Public does not have deep pockets and panics very quickly. Geo Financial Services. In the initial part, Geo will eat share of existing banks and NBFCs. The total business pie remains same. A very large new player is arriving with deep pockets and a sound management. The company would be backed by Reliance Group and it will eat the share of existing banks and NBFCs. Some of it will be SBI share for sure. The core business because of inflation, I mentioned the EPS part reducing is under threat right now. Inflation is here to stay. Cost of CASA, which is the interest rate part, the rate at which bank is raising money from you, that is going to remain high. As a result, the core business will continue to have higher operating cost. Even the manpower cost is going up because of inflation right now. This will result into lower profit from core business. Now the other income from investments can help if the economy continues to grow, if capital markets continue to grow. But that is non-core business. That is like saying grandfather left you a lot of FDs and you are living off those FDs. Your own income is very low. For some time to make the numbers look pretty, SBI could even sell some of the investments. Even if it sells half a percent in a large company, it will raise a lot of money. It can make the balance sheet look pretty because of that. Most investors will not see through it because the reduction will be too tiny. But that is not a healthy practice. I'm not sure if the auditor will point it out, 
but that is something that can be done. Hope this analysis and the threads were useful. For me, the decision for now is hold. I'm not going to buy SBI. In fact, after the results tomorrow, SBI may fall a bit also. Mostly the bank index is under tremendous pressure already. On top of that, if the Q on Q and Y on Y numbers are not pretty, the stock is definitely going to correct. Will I buy a dips? I am not too sure. I'll take that call depending upon the dip. It is a good business. However, the core of the business is not growing. The bank is running on its investments. That's a great feeling to have so many assets on your balance sheet. However, that cannot compensate for your core business performance. So I'll wait for the core numbers to improve before I take a call on SBI. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.